Uh, this is a, a preview of a pinning API um, that, that I've been working on um, that is kind of picking up a lot of work that, that was done by, by a number of folks in the last few, last few months. And um, kind of a, it's a goal to kind of land, really settle on, on an API that's working well enough for most of our use cases and just ship it. Um, uh, already now, there's a lot of opportunities for, for different products in the IPFS landscape to, to leverage this kind of a, uh, pinning API. So I want to kind of use this talk to give a bit of the motivation for where this pinning API came from, um, walk through a bit of the work that was done before uh, on kind of fleshing this out, talk a bit about the scope of the problem. It turns out to be a, a, very, um, a very tricky and thorny problem. Um, maybe talk a little bit about some interface wishes that, that it, I've been collecting from, from a number of folks across the IPFS ecosystem, and then talk about um, kind of the, the roadmap going forward in, in, in terms of uh, the kind of proposed API changes for, for the pinning API. So this, this can be something pretty significant and impactful long term, um, but this change is going to take a bit a, a while. It's going to be staged and phased. So you know at, at the very beginning, nothing is going to nothing significant is going to is going to change. Um, but hopefully, what you see today is going to be um, going to be interesting and um, is going to give all pinning services uh, an interesting um, way of of potentially like having to write a lot less code and and um, being able to use common tools. All right, let's talk about motivation. So the this is kind of a long-standing issue. Um, a lot a lot of the uh, pinning services are familiar with this, where where there's kind of a goal of being able to to use the same um, the same API because uh, part users and applications having to be built against one API then find it hard to to potentially switch to to a better service uh, in another way. And so there's kind of like an API lock in there that's that's um, potentially um, Maybe benefiting one party, but it def definitely hurts everybody else uh, in, in ecosystem. Um, and there's also other benefits where there's a lot of tools that end up having to be written custom for one pinning service, and another pinning service would like to use them. But now, um, the because the APIs are not the same, then then things don't quite work. So this is clearly a case where uh, having a standardized common API would be ideal, especially for any kind of tooling um, around pin sets that that is just fully open source. So anything that um, that it that is not related to a service dealing with pin sets would love to be able to use kind of some standard standard tooling. It's also the case that IPFS cluster needed something like this, um, and the, the cluster team came up with with a version of this of this um, uh, pinning API that, that that I'll describe. Um, and in fact, they did most of the work that led here. So um, this is mostly trying to kind of close some of those conversations and then get to the next next step. Um, I like to flag that. Uh, Applications like desktop and companion need this kind of thing. You'll hear more from Molly later on about how this kind of API can be used in in products to make um, the experience of users much much better better and give create a bunch of opportunities for pinning services that that weren't there before. So um, there's a, there's a lot an issue on GitHub. Uh, you can go and check out and read where most of the work around this API um, was done, and there's a really good conversation. Looking through a whole, you know, different di different set of um, different set of like constraints around around the API, and this just picks up from from most of uh, of the work there. So, a uh, big shout out to to Adrian uh, who did most of this, and a number of other folks. Um, uh, you can you can see their usernames here, and um, and and also Hector, who I think is not in this issue, but but ended up providing a lot of the thoughts that that ended up um, contributing to this API. Uh, so there's a, a link in that issue to to this uh, Swagger um, uh, API, and and this has most of the of the feel for for one of the proposals that that I want to move forward today. Um, and you can go check it out. It's kind of like a like a an, a REST oriented um, uh, way of of just address you, being able to change pins in in some service. And and the idea is that it's kind of like a standalone thing, is is very thin. Um, it's just kind of a, an easy thing to bind to. Um, part of the discussion in the, in, the, in the issue, though, talked about how it would be really nice and really useful to be able to have this API in different flavors, meaning uh, having it in REST uh, or having it in gRPC or potentially having it in, 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 um, in, in shell scripts or, or things like that. So one of the takeaways for me was um, it, it's really critical to define the data structures and the semantics um, and then come up with two or three different flavors 
that are the most common that people are mostly going to want, um, and then just uh, navigate around that. Um, so for, unfortunately, given given all of the different ways in which people people use these kinds of APIs, uh, it's unlikely that we're we're going to find exactly one. Um, so I think uh, going with with a few flavors is is, is the right the right thing. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you'll you'll hear more from Ali later about how um, uh, how this can be used on a number of number of uh, products and so on. So I'll defer defer all of that. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the cluster use case, which is that um, the way that cluster manages pin sets is that it, it sort of keeps a, a an append only log um, and uses distributed consensus to agree on what has been pinned or what has not been pinned. And so there's a cluster runs a consensus process. Um, it used to be a raft, and now it uses a, a thing called a Merkle Merc CRDT uh, to agree on on the pins that are added and removed to the pin set. Uh, and so you can think of each one of these entries um, as extending the log and either having an add or a remove um, of a pin, and that pin then being you know a CID to like a whole whole large graph. Uh, this model ends up being extremely useful for a lot of things. So this is not like the API that we just saw, but, but the ability to, to de describe a data structure in this kind of thread-oriented way um, is extremely useful because it means that parties can follow, um, follow a pin set and then just get a feed of changes and then adjust accordingly. Um, and it also means that you can um, serialize all of, this, all of these updates and then reason about them later. So the API is, does not so, so an API that that thought of, that would potentially use the data structure would um would offer the capabilities of looking at the entire history of events, which which is a, something that a lot of parties care about in terms of pin sets. Um, some parties care about just knowing that the thing is pinned. Other parties care about knowing exactly who pinned something at what point in time, and whether or not it has and when it was unpinned. Um, this is especially useful in 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 any kind of collaborative setting where a group of different parties is coming together to back up some important data set. So let's scope of the problem. Um, the pinning API today uh, is both kind of local and remote. There's a local pinning um, command, and then there's, of course, remote uh, pinning services. Pinning and how we do it has a bunch of implications on applications, because applications have to tell IPFS to keep stuff around, or applications have to um, you know, hope that the data that they need is there. Um, it also has implications on services because how this API is defined um, ends up shaping a lot of infrastructure and services, right? So, so how this API works ends up affecting what um, a lot of folks running infrastructure have to end up having to build. So at the end of the day, pinning is a very key architectural component. And, and today, local pinning has a few problems. So for example, um, the way the pinning is set up now, if you, if you call, if two different applications pin the same, the same CID, uh, what will happen is that the, uh, the first one will succeed, the second one will also succeed because it's already been pinned. Um, but then, if one of them removes that, removes the pin, it'll remove it for both. So, so this is a this is just a, a problem that needs to be fixed, where um, it should be possible for different users or different applications to pin the same CID independently. Uh, there's a few other kind of uh, uh, tricky issues like that of, uh, of this kind of nature, but um, that's kind of the, the most concrete example. Um, most useful concrete example. Uh, there's a couple other things that that make pinning hard, which is thinking about access control, um, not just in terms of who gets to pin something, especially in kind of settings where and I, many parties or many applications might have control um, or or might be able to um, have some kind of access to an IPFS node, uh, but also in cases where you want to pin something, but that doesn't mean you want to serve it to somebody else, or you want to pin something but you only want to serve it to a subset of, of users. And so access control is kind of tied to the nature of the data that, um, that people are, are asking to pin. And so there's some, some ranges of policies related to content that um, uh, are not directly related to pinning, but they're kind of adjacent to pinning. And so whatever solution ends up happening for pinning will greatly inform the access control uh, for, for content. Uh, similarly, you have the same kind of um, effect on content routing announcements. So today IPFS is, is uh, just announces the content that, that you add for the most part unless you, you turn this off. But um, content routing announcements um, are sort of like an all or nothing thing. You either um, announce or you don't announce. And if you announce, then you announce everything. Um, from the get-go, you know, 
it was it was a goal to to have policies eventually where you you're able to describe what you want to announce and how um, more carefully. Now the tooling to do that and the, and the kind of edges of that problem are pretty complicated as well. And so it's not even now it's not super clear exactly how you would want to do this. There's a few ideas floating around uh, the community, but but nothing concrete has emerged where where clearly um, you know we have a great API for for how to how to think about announcements. Um, but again, it, it's related to pinning uh, and it's adjacent to pinning, and whatever we do with pinning is going to end up affecting this. So so it's useful to kind of think about it uh, uh, as part of it. So th this is a really large scope, and and the problem here is that finding the right solution that hits all of these things well on the get-go before we kind of have the time to try it out with a bunch of applications and use it uh, uh, to solve real problems is likely going to produce something that's, that's probably wrong. So the, the key thing to recognize here is, is to really break it apart into different problems and to phase it in, such, in, in a way. But also remember that these things are very related, meaning that whatever we end up doing for pinning is going to have implications for applications, services, and so on. Um, all right, so with that, all of that kind of caveat, um, I'll, I'll go through some a few wishes that uh, for for this API. Uh, and this is these are not just uh, uh, not just mine. This is kind of collected from from a number of of notes uh, across the the community. Uh, so first off, pins should be able pins should be a first class object. Uh, so today, pins um, are kind of this, this large pin set, but you can't really refer to a pin the same way. Um, the, the same way that you can refer to, say, a branch in, or a tag in Git. So, so uh, it, it's clear that a lot of interfaces would like pin to be a first-class object. And, and I love that pinning services do this. So pinning services today treat pins as a first-class object, have a bunch of metadata associated with pins, and, um, and have sorted that out. Um, it should also be the case that pins should have a unique handle um, to solve that problem that we described before around um, two applications pinning the same thing and then only one of them removing it and deleting it for the other party. Um, if pins had a unique handle, then it, you know two objects would be created, and each application would be able to remove the pin the, uh, accordingly. Um, we should also be able to keep the history of how the pin set changes. So today, um, IPFS doesn't do this; uh, cluster does it. Uh, but it'd be really, really useful in IPFS proper to be able to to understand how the pin set changes. Uh, of course, that history might need to be garbage collected over time. Um, so this might be in Kind of a ref log style thing, or or directly in the data structure of the pin set. Um, it should also be easy for tools to explore and follow the pin set. So this means um, things like cluster and and other tools like that uh, should be able to see the changes in the pin set and kind of um, subscribe to to events that are happening. Um, and this would would make the um, this would greatly simplify the tooling that needs to get built around some of these things because um, having an API that is supposed to be real time and is supposed to catch every event um, is more brittle and error prone than if you can always refer to a log of all of all um, uh, changes and you know that you've caught up to the changes and you know that you have consistency on both sides. So it, it's easy to effectively mess up the um, a, a pinning uh, a pinning API um, if some event gets gets lost or or um, or, or, or succeeds without the other party knowing, or something like that. Uh, having a log uh, is very, very useful. Uh, it's, it should also be the case that pins should be scoped to each application instance. So right now, um, the pinning API in in um, IPFS tooling ends up creating a very large scope where um, people have on the order of you know thousands of pins and so on. Uh, when in reality, usually they just want to keep around whatever they consider their local files, so like MFS or the files files tree. So that could just be one pin. It's a pin that changes a lot, but but I, perhaps it could be could be one pin or, or maybe a few. Um, likewise, there's other applications that might want to maybe keep track of, of a data set together, but wouldn't want to keep you know, hundreds of pins separately, we just want to have one pin. So um, it'd be ideal if these kinds of interfaces uh, supported that kind of thing. Now, the one of the other things is that it would be very useful for this pin object to track some metadata on pins when they were created, um, who created this, which user or application created this pin, um, and kind of uh, and so for cluster or other use cases, what kind of replication factors uh, this would imply, um, and replication factors might mean 
you know, create independent replicas. It might mean erasure coding. Um, there's a whole host of potential um, things there. So ideally, we should, if we gain the ability to just assign some end of data on the pin, then um, then that should be that should be good enough. Now for remote APIs, um, again, we also want that uh, pin pin should be a first class object. Um, we should be able to individually pin and unpin objects. We should be able to pin and unpin groups of pins. And in like the cluster use case, we should be able to follow a pin set. Now, it's worth noting that different services will want to do things differently. Some services are built today in kind of the individual pin on pin operation and will want to continue doing that. Um, and other services will want to kind of follow the pin set type of type of approach. Uh, so this really suggests that the, there really are should be two uh, two different porcelains over the same kind of underlying API. Um, it should also be noted that, that different services have constraints over their authentication. So while many groups would love to be able to kind of arrive at a single authentication system, um, that's actually uh, basically impossible and different services will require different kind of authentication systems. So whatever this API does, it should either have auth around it or should just pass opaque authentication tokens. Um, this also is relevant in terms of payments. So if you think of passing payments through these authentication systems, not just a, um, not just uh, say a, a token identifying a party, um, you you might want to pass an opaque payment because this could be a Stripe thing, this could be uh, a cryptocurrency, this could be all hosts of all kinds of things. Um, and so. The, whatever the, we do in the API, it should be compatible with all the different auth systems that people use, all the different kind of payment systems that people use, um, and it should just have a way of doing that. Um, we should also be able to distinguish pinning explicitly from pushing or pulling. So pushing or pulling is the, the process of you know, pushing a, a, you know, a whole graph to, to another party or pulling a whole graph from another party. Um, that operation might be expensive and is altogether different from the intent of hey, I would like you to keep this stuff around. Um, and so having an API that actually distinguishes those, those three um, is, is, a, is a useful and important thing. This, this is a thing that came up in the, in the Threader conversation in, in GitHub. Uh, separately, we want to be able to stay connected to the pinning service. So there's a lot of applications that would like to push things to the pinning service fairly quickly uh, or, or would like to fetch things from a pinning service that's associated with, with, an, with the application. Um, and it ends up being that uh, the current Lib2P connection management might eventually close the connection to the pinning service as part of its normal uh, kind of connection garbage collection. And so this is uh, a useful thing because it keeps the connection numbers down. Um, but ideally, we'd like to, to kind of force those connections to stay open. And if they get closed for whatever reason, uh, try to reopen them. Um, this is similar to other needs in, in IPFS where uh, it'd be really useful to kind of uh, maintain connections between cluster nodes or be able to maintain connections between um, between kind of like peering peering systems that, that need to be able to have traffic flowing. So pinning services and the pinning API would greatly benefit from, from having a lip, lip to be facility for, for establishing a connection, like kind of a persistent long-term connection. Um, and then it, it should be possible to use the same pinning API to pin to multiple services. So ideally, Applications and tools can be built against one API, which might have many flavors, but it's the semantically the same thing, and the data structure is the same thing, but then kind of gets consumed and used by a, by a lot of different services. So another, another piece of this is to, is to kind of distinguish the economic transactions that we're talking about. So when we talk about pinning, we, we're explicitly saying, hey, please store this data, but we're implicitly also saying, hey, please get the data from somewhere, potentially from me, hey, also, please serve the data back to me at some point. And potentially, please also serve the data to others. There's a lot of economic arrangements that have very different costs, uh, all embedded into one. And so this makes it very difficult for pinning service providers to distinguish the costs for, for these different, different features. So one of the goals here is to be able to distinguish these so that pinning service operators could assign different costs to all of these operations, or not, um, but at least have the flexibility to be able to do it. So whatever we do in, in, in these APIs, we should be able to make these things distinct. Um, so roughly, we have kind of are narrowing down on, on the idea that, hey, we, we have some kind of push to explicitly transfer a graph to a remote that may or may not be a free operation. Uh, we want to explicitly express the intent to store and back up some data that may or may not be a free operation. 
and we want to express the, uh, we want to be able to pull and, and, and download a graph from a particular remote that may or may not be a free operation. And that may be my graph or it might be somebody else's graph. And, and so this pull needs to carry some kind of authentication potentially because uh, the, 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 um, that transaction, so it's not just the pin operation that, that needs to carry authentication, it's the pull tra transaction as well that needs to, needs to carry authentication. Um, and it should also be possible for the pin object to express some, some intent to publish. And so what this means is that I should be able to, to um, agree with, the, with a pinning service that to please store this stuff and serve it out to other people for free and charge me. So, so that kind of intent should be able to be kind of expressed either in the metadata of the pin or in some other facility in the, in the API. All right, um, so there's a lot of wishes there. There's a lot of different things that, uh, that, that people would want out, out of this API. Um, and so what, what ends up making sense here is to kind of decompose a problem uh, into these different, different pieces. You're starting to see kind of the shape of it emerge um, and then see what we can do in terms of kind of a roadmap to, to kind of satisfy the most important needs sooner and kind of learn more about the designs that, that might be viable um, and, and then kind of push in, push in some directions later. So um, I, I kind of narrowed it down to six proposed changes. And so uh, and, uh, these, will, these will get written up and, and put, on, put on GitHub right now. It's, it's, it's uh, uh, mostly in, in uh, notes and, and so on. So this, this has to get well-structured in, into kind of an RFC style um, proposal. But, but I'll kind of give the brief summary here because I, I'm really interested in people's feedback later today on, in the workshop time. So, so change one is to eventually kind of inter, in, in the local pinning API, introduce a pinning object to track metadata. So the, we, I already mentioned that earlier, so I won't, won't go, go into it again. And the pin set should evolve to be, track these objects as opposed to just the CIDs directly. Um, this should also solve the, the kind of that problem that, that we highlighted earlier. Then it should be possible to create a pin API for services or, or tools to handle most simple cases. So most services today just have kind of like a, a CRUD style um, API around being able to create, read, update, and delete pins. So that kind of basic simple thing should just work with a simple API. Um, and that could be around an IPFS node, or it could, so it could be IPFS node to IPFS node, or it could be, could be some other service. Um, and so this is, uh, thankfully mo was, mostly done by already. And so we can, and, and this is the most urgent thing. So most of the community really needs this. Uh, the other stuff is more nice to have and, and, and good for, for the future. Um, we also need a pin thread API. And so that means it would be extremely useful for kind of these forward looking cases, things like cluster and, <clears throat> and a number of applications to be able to, to have an API that gives us the entire data structure um, of the history of what happened to the pin set as things get added and removed and so on, and for parties to be able to follow that real time. Um, and ideally kind of replicate the whole thing. So these kind of thread objects um, and the pin objects uh, should all kind of be IPLD, IPLD graphs. Uh, it's worth noting that these are not sequential. So these different uh, proposed changes could happen in any order. They're gonna end up using the same pin data structure, um, but we could go about uh, building these out in different order order, and so I propose we go through the you know, P0 of creating the simple API for services need, and then kind of move from there. Uh, there's three other changes, and, and these are um, not exactly pinning related, but they're adjacent. And so one of them is to add a push-pull API. So thankfully, this is already kind of partly in flight because of the GraphSync integrations. Um, there's a whole kind of data transfer component that, um, that um, a number of us have been working on that makes it easy to reason about pushing and pulling entire IPLD graphs and associating um, authentication uh, or, or payments through that. So this is a component that was needed in, in, in Filecoin to be able to move around IPLD graphs and be able to do payment channels uh, with them, but it's also needed in, in IPFS to be able to kind of authenticate content of saying, hey, um, I really only wanna be able to provide this content to a particular party and being able to authenticate that, um, th that party becomes a, a useful feature. So most of the code for this is, is written already. Um, it just has to make its way into IPFS. Um, uh, we also want a way to persistent, persistently manage peers. And so this is, uh, there's been a number of issues around this. Um, we just need to kind of formalize something and then kind of, uh, kind of push it. it it's, it's a valuable thing for all pinning services and, and we should kind of aim to, aim to do it at, at some point. 
and the last one is something that I haven't mentioned before, but it kind of struck me as, as um, it struck me that a lot of these APIs are really working around the fact that IPFS right now does not have a way of easily delegating API calls to other IPFS nodes. So an IPFS node cannot cause a remote call in another IPFS node, of course, because of trust reasons. But you, you might be able to do it in an authenticated way. So having an authenticated remote operation API could solve a lot of these, these kinds of concerns. That, however, is a, is a huge undertaking, um, and it requires kind of thinking very carefully about which APIs you might want to do this with and so on. Um, but this might be extremely useful for pinning services because it might not be just pin. It might be a whole bunch of other operations that suddenly become available as an easy service without having to write a lot of code. Uh, all right, so the last part um, is when I kind of mention the, the, um, what, what these APIs are, are looking like. I am, I am running very late, so I'll, um, I'll, I'll share the slides uh, now instead of kind of going in depth through it. Um, I'll just describe the, the, for the workshop today, the pinning service API, this is kind of what we'll be discussing, really landing on, on kind of the, the CRUD operations. And then I'll mention the, that for the thread, um, so th there's a whole bunch of requirements here. Uh, I won't go into detail for them. Uh, if you're familiar with the cluster use case, you'll, you'll know it. Um, but we, we, after thinking about this very carefully and thinking about the, the whole shape of the problem and the importance of ACLs and so on, um, I landed on the fact that um, uh, textile threads are exactly the right data structure. Um, it covers almost all of the use cases, if not all of the use cases, use cases that we've been worried about. It's an IPLD graph. It allows um, creating an, a lo uh, an event log of, of updates, of ads and deletes and so on. And it has built in all of the kind of encryption tooling to reason about being able to read or, or write to different parts of it um, and or be able to replicate all of it without being able to read it, um, which is a whole bunch of the heavy lift around access controls for replicating clusters. So, so that kind of thing, so, so it's likely, it's very likely that the, the whole um, pinning thread API is going to turn into, into a textile thread. Um, and we still have a, to run a bunch of experiments, try to prototype it, try to use it, and so on, um, and, and do the heavy lift. But first of all, like a huge thanks to, to Textile for, for creating all of this and, and basically implementing it, you know, all of the complicated uh, logic around this. Um, but it's likely that the pinning API in, in, uh, in, in IPFS eventually will kind of move in this direction. Uh, and if you haven't read this in, in depth, like definitely go go do it. It's going to change how you're writing uh, a lot of applications. Uh, all right. So um, for road for brief roadmap, we'll have the workshop later today. We'll talk about this some more. Um, we'll then uh, I, I'll be formalizing this these changes and proposals and submitting them, and then um, hopefully do the the simple pin service API soon because that's the, what people need the most. Um, and then later on in in the later part of 2020. We can go towards towards um, making decisions on on the pin thread API and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we could we could move faster on this depending on on people's um, um, desire to go and implement it. I know that the the that the um, IPFS team is uh, has all hands full, so um, the pinning the pin service API is kind of like a critical piece that we could probably do do soon. Um, everything else will will kind of get staged over time. Um, all right, thank you.